What is up, you guys? My name is Colton, and today I wanted to do a mock draft of the first round for the 2020 draft. Uh, a lot of the mock drafts I've noticed only have 10 or 15 players, and a lot of times they go from either 10 to 1 or 15 to 1, and I find it a little hard to, to watch because you kind of want to know in the order that it's actually drafted in. Um, so what I did, these aren't my actual numbers. I took the eight most popular mock, or sorry, the eight most reliable mock drafts um, on the internet for March, like their most recent ones. And what I did is I, uh, I wrote down all the names and I wrote down all the numbers um, where they got ranked. And then I took out the highest number and the lowest number for each player. Um, so I had eight mock drafts, so I knocked out the highest and the lowest. So there was only six remaining numbers for each player. Uh, then I added up those six numbers and I divided by six to get a score at where, where they should be ranked. So I, I'd like to think mine is mathematically probably the most accurate on the internet because it, it takes every, every mock draft kind of into account uh, that I kind of deemed from a reliable source. Um, and it kind of got an average. So I would like to think mine would be fairly accurate. And I'm also doing mine a little deeper. It's not a full first round mock draft, but it's pretty close. So there might be some names you haven't heard of yet, um, but I found there wasn't too many on YouTube that actually talked about these players. So I thought I'd uh, talk about them and give you a little bit of insight. Did a little bit of research. This whole thing probably took me about 20 hours to put together. Uh, so if you give me a like, it will make me feel good about myself. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, I don't have any ads or anything. I'm not making any money. I'm just doing this because I miss hockey very much. Um, so I'm going to start out number one, uh, Alex Lef Lefreniere. Uh, he's an easy number one pick in the draft. Uh, he's 6'1", 196 pounds. He's a left wing. He plays hard, finishes his checks. Um, he was number one across the board. Um, so it's pretty obvious that he's going to be number one. And I don't really need to talk about him too much more than that. At number two, we have Tim Stutzle. Uh, he played in the German men's league uh, this year, and he didn't look out of place. Uh, the guy's risen a lot in, in a lot of the mock drafts, and he's gotten 34 points in 41 games this year. Uh, he's one of the best playmakers in the draft, and he also has an explosive first step. And he's really risen out of nowhere this year, and if we actually average out all the mocks, he actually finished above Byfield, who we have at number three, Quinton Byfield. He is 6'4", 214 pounds. Um, obviously these stats jump right off the sheet. Uh, he's a center that shoots left. He got 61 points in 64 games, which had him, uh, at number six in the OHL in points per game. Uh, he's also one of the youngest in the draft class. Uh, he uses his size well in protecting the puck, but probably doesn't use his size enough in physical play. Some have given him the term gentle giant, which probably isn't the best thing to be called. Uh, he does a few things extremely well, like transition the puck from his own zone into the offensive zone, but he doesn't have any glaring weaknesses, and some say he could have the highest ceiling in the draft. At number four, um, I have Marco Rossi, um, Austrian-born little guy. He's absolutely insane. At five foot nine, 179 pounds, um, he doesn't sound too amazing on paper, uh, but this year with the Ottawa 67s, he bought up 65 points in 53 games uh, and then 22 points in 17 playoff games. Uh, Rossi plays with tenacity and isn't shy going to the dirty areas of the ice. Uh, he's great on the power play and also a really good penalty killer. I would say his main issues is defensively 5-on-5 five five, and he's sometimes caught cheating looking for an offensive chance. He can transition the puck very well though and make smart decisions. He has a good shot, um, but also is always looking for a pass. At number five, we have Cole Perfetti. Uh, he's 5'10", 177-pound center. Uh, he's one guy that excels in high-pressure situations, and when the spotlight is on him, might be a weird thing to say, but I think he's the kind of player you would want in the playoffs. Uh, he rises to the occasion. Uh, he got 74 points in 61 games, and 37 of those points were goals. At number six, I have Alexander Holtz. Uh, he is six foot, 182 pounds. He has an amazing wrist shot and is deadly offensively. He isn't really classified as a two-way forward, but he is respectively good defensively uh, and is not a liability. He played great for Sweden, and any team looking for offense would be lucky to have him. 
At number seven, uh, we have Jamie Drysdale. Uh, he's the bona fide number one D uh, in this forward heavy draft. Drysdale is just under a point per game. Uh, he is 5'11, 170 pounds, but his skating and smarts are his main strengths. His skating is actually completely insane. Just watch some of his highlights. Uh, of him and tell me he doesn't remind you exactly of Quinn Hughes. His shot isn't quite as good as Quinn, uh, but his skating and uh, creativity is just as good. Um, I personally have him a little higher than seventh. I think he could even be uh, fourth overall, um, but that's just personally, just from me watching YouTube videos. I'm going to trust the professionals and the averages, but if you watch Jamie Drysdale's highlights, I think you'll see what I see. At number eight, we have Lucas Raymond. Uh, he's 5'10", 165 pounds. Uh, he's very skilled with a ton of hockey sense. He has great hands and speed as well. Uh, his worth, work ethic is my favorite thing about him. Um, when he doesn't have the puck, he's doing all he can to get it back. He's kind of like Pedersen without as good a shot, obviously, um, but with Pud Colson's chasing down the puck attitude if that kind of makes sense. Uh, he has fared well against men uh, this year, uh, considering he got limited ice time. At number nine, I have uh, Anton Lundell. Um, what is weird is he's probably one of the safest picks, and his floor is pretty high. Uh, he's extremely well-rounded and almost NHL-ready as it is. He is 6'1", 183 pounds. Um, his two-way game is extremely mature. Uh, he does lack dynamic skill, but he was able to put up 19 points in 38 uh, games in La Liga last year. And at number 10, I have Yaroslav Askarov. Uh, he's the best goalie prospect to come in quite a while. He is 6'3", 176 pounds. Uh, he sits about a 920 save percentage in Russia. Uh, goalies are always a high risk in the first round, but he definitely has shown a lot of potential. Um, now at number 11, we have a defenseman who has risen in the ranks quite a bit. We got Jake Sanderson. Uh, Sanderson uh, has skyrocketed up the list. He's listed at 6'185 pounds. Uh, this American defenseman, I believe, is a lock at the number two defense as the number two defenseman in the draft. Um, he is smart, reliable, and moves the puck really well. He probably wouldn't play on your top power play, but he has a good enough shot to play on power play too. <clears throat> At number 12, I have Connor Zeri. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing all these names well, but I'm doing the best I can. Uh, he's six foot, 181 pounds. Uh, he got 70 points in 49 games. Uh, one thing is he was playing on a stack line for the Blazers. Uh, both his line mates actually got more points, uh, but they all have similar points per game. Um, so we don't know for sure if it's because of the line he was playing on, but he definitely had good line mates as well. Uh, he's really good at everything, but kind of amazing at nothing. Um, at number 13, I have Dylan Holloway. He's six foot, 192 pounds. Um, last year in the Alberta, Alberta Junior, he completely lit up the league. He got 1.66 points per game uh, last year, which is the best anyone has done in that league in like 40 years or something ridiculous. Um, this year, though, uh, he's the only draft-eligible forward that played in the NCAA, and he got 7 points in 17 games. Uh, he can skate really well. Uh, one other nice thing about him is he doesn't uh, shy away from contact and is quite physical. Uh, at number 14, we have another riser. Uh, we got Jack Quinn. He's risen almost out of nowhere and just taken off. Uh, 89 points. In 62 games, a uh, guy is fairly well-rounded, uh, but just an absolute beast offensively. Um, this could partially be playing with line mate Marco Rossi. At number 15, I have Dawson Mercer. Uh, he is six foot, 170-pound winger. Uh, he's fairly good um, all-around player, and he can put up lots of points. Uh, he slows down the game, and he's really good handles. Uh, his shot seems to have a really quick release. At number 16, I have Rodion Amirov. Uh, he is six foot, 168 pound winger. Um, he's a Russian with great speed and hockey IQ. And um, I was talking with uh, the scouting guy uh, in his chat, and I asked about uh, Amirov, and he said he has really good underlining underlying stats. Um, so. 
that kind of explains why he's sitting where he is. Um, at number 17, I have Noel Gundler. Uh, he's a goal-scoring winger. Uh, he is 6'2", 174 pounds. Um, he's very talented. But he's fast, but not really fast, and he sometimes coasts a little too much on the ice. His skating is definitely his best quality, though. Uh, his edge work is great, and he can stop on a dime. At number 18, we have Braden Schneider. He is 6'2", 209 points, and he is a right-hand shooting defenseman. Um, this is where uh, we have him, but uh, we've seen right-hand shooting defensemen get taken much earlier than expected in the past. Uh, especially defensemen that have a little bit of size. Um, he has good feet and really good defensive awareness. He's a two-way defenseman, but I would but I would lean on the defensive side of the game. Uh, he doesn't have a super high ceiling, uh, but he can definitely play top four minutes. At number 19, we have a player with really big balls. Uh, you guessed it, John Mysack. Um, I believe it's actually pronounced Meshack. That's just a little joke, um, but that's not as much fun. Uh, Meshack is six foot, 176 pounds. He's a center. Uh, he's a skilled forward who is quite good at everything. Um, he did really good for the Czech team and the World Juniors. Uh, he came over from the Czech leagues and played some time with the Hamilton Bulldogs, putting up 25 points in 22 games, and 15 of those uh, were actually goals. Um, at number 20, we have Maverick Bork. He is 5'10", 165 pound center. Uh, he put up 71 points in 49 games in the QMJHL. Uh, he is really good offensively, um, but also defensively really reliable. Uh, his main weaknesses is his strength um, due to his size. At number 22, we have Henrix Lapierre. Uh, he's 6 foot, 165 pound center. Uh, the scary thing about him, um, he has had three concussions in the last calendar year. That is a lot of concussions. Um, he's one of the most creative playmakers in the draft. He is very well-rounded, and if he didn't have three concussions this year, he probably would have definitely been a top 10 pick in the draft. So he is probably one of the more risky, uh, risky people to pick, but he could have a pretty high ceiling if he is healthy in the long term. He has a little bit of a muffin of a shot. Uh, I'd say he's basically always a pass-first guy, kind of like Henrik Sedin. I know he's not Henrik Sedin. I'm all my comparisons are Canucks because that's the main thing I know. He's kind of like Henrik Sedin uh, mindset where he's always looking for the pass, even sometimes when everyone's yelling at their TVs for him to uh, shoot. <laughs> um, at number 22, I have Caden uh, Gooley. He is six foot three, 187 pound defenseman. Uh, he engages physically and is best in the defensive zone. Uh, he isn't too off offensively creative but has a pretty uh, decent point shot. He also skates pretty darn good for a bigger than average guy. At number 23, we have Jeremy Poirier. He is six foot, 190 pound defenseman. Uh, he got 53 points in 64 games for the St. John Sea Dogs. Uh, he has a great hockey IQ and sees the ice very well. He also has one of the best hands in the draft and he is a defenseman. Um, I personally could see him taken a lot earlier than this, um, but that's just from me watching a few highlights. There's a few guys I'm high on, like Drysdale and Poirier, um, and there's another player later on I'm going to talk about as well. Um, at number 24, we have Justin Barron. Uh, Justin Barron, this guy is six foot two, 187 pounds, uh, and he's a right-handed D. Uh, again, right-handed D seem to be in hot demand. Um, he's a stay-at-home shutdown defenseman with some offensive upside. Uh, the Mooseheads had a lot of injuries uh, this year, and he played a huge role, uh, often playing against the top lines every night. Um, he doesn't lose many board battles. Um, he probably needs to work on his vision, and he is sometimes caught making some poor decisions. At number 25, I have Jacob Perot. He is 5'11", 198-pound center. Uh, he put up 70 points in 57 games in the OHL for the Chronicles of Sarnia Sting. Uh, he is quick, agile, and strong on his skates. He has one of the better shots in the draft. Um, he's a high-level finisher and very creative with the puck. Uh, he has a weakness. It would probably be um, his playmaking ability. 
Um, now my last guy, everyone's probably yelling, wondering why he hasn't been talked about yet. Uh, I kind of saved the best for last, but this is kind of where he is ranked for um, for the average. Um, I think he belongs in the first round, and none other than Seth Jarvis. Uh, he's five foot ten, one hundred and seventy two pound right wing. He put up ninety eight points. Yes, ninety eight points in 58 games um he's one of the hottest players going into the draft um and he's been starting to be on everyone's radar who's actually paying attention to the upcoming draft um he is third in points per game in the whl in the last 20 years and he's even ahead of uh lion dry <laughs> leon dry uh in that league for points per game. Uh, I think any team that drafts this player is going to be very excited about getting him. He's one of the best skaters in the draft. His skating and tenacity um, for going for the puck is just insane. I personally have him quite a bit higher than this. Um, maybe later on I'll actually do my own mock with my own feelings. But this is basically just the average of all the uh, reliable mock drafts. So I'm going to trust these numbers are probably a lot more accurate than what I... Um, I'm not a scout. I just watch highlights on YouTube. Uh, it is what it is. Um, uh, where was I? He is one of the best skaters in the draft, skating tenacity. Uh, I have him quite a bit higher than this. I do think he could even be drafted in the later part of the top 15. Um, I think his ceiling is actually that high. Um, so that's it, guys. I I think these are who deserve the first round mention. I know you guys are probably wondering why I didn't go all the way to the top 31 uh, to complete uh, the first round. Honest answer is it's just too close after this. Every guy after this um, was not in the first round of four of the top eight I looked at. Basically, there's eight mock drafts that I looked at. Um, and if they weren't mentioned in the top 31 in four of them, then I took them. I took them off. So everyone on this list was in at least four of the eight mock drafts, and I kind of averaged it all out. So, I mean, I hope you guys like the video. There isn't um, enough videos like this that kind of go deeper into the first round. Uh, I really do like the Will uh, Scouting. Um, he is way more knowledgeable than me. Um, but this is just all the um, different. Um, different mock drafts around the internet and I think um, it's going to be fairly accurate. I mean things could obviously change based on needs and based on where everyone's actually going to pick. Um, but those are my feelings. I tried to make the video relatively short but I put a lot of time into this uh, so I hope you like and if I get a lot of new subscribers I might do a lot more hockey videos. My channel's kind of done a little bit of uh, everything I like whether it's gaming or hockey. I kind of just talk about whatever um, just for fun. Um, but if we have a lot of people that are actually caring about hockey, um, I might make this into a little more of a hockey talk uh, channel. So let me know in the comments. Um, also, one thing in the comments, um, if we're getting people from all around the league, um, like fans from every single team, please let me know in the comments what your team's need is. Because obviously, I mainly just watch um, Canucks games for the most part. So I don't know the ins and outs of um, all the different teams and what their actual needs is and if I can compile a list of what each team actually needs that'll probably help me out and I might do another video later on um, that's going to be a little more um, once we know the order for sure once this whole corona thing is over um, then we'll figure out the order and maybe I'll be able to get uh, more of an accurate um, pick based off need so hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video uh, and yeah Take care. Hopefully we have hockey back soon. All right. Bye, guys.